listen, I don't know about y'all, but Rocky is my favorite, favorite movie. You hear me? And uh, sometimes, I don't know if you guys have ever had to do this, but when life comes at you real hard, sometimes you just gotta get in the ring, you know? box it out you know just get your stance kind of see where it's coming from where is this adversity coming from where are the hits coming from get your stance and get in there and box it out box it out box it out <laughs> well listen i'm so glad that you guys are here with me today um first off thank you to miss linda spratley dunn for having me and for allowing me to be able to just encourage you guys and just to talk to you a little bit about what it means to pivot, you know, as your career mapping and, and you're trying to maneuver through, through life, um, whether it is career, whether it's relationship, whatever it is, there are some three key principles that I want to talk to you about. And one of the things that I've learned in my walk, in my career is even in the sense of Rocky, right? Rocky, he was the underdog. He was in a situation where, you know what? Everybody's counting me out. I'm the littlest guy out here, but what he knew how to do was take a punch. But what you didn't understand when you were watching him was he would get his stance, right? And he would watch and see what his opponent is doing, where the adversity was coming from. So he knew, all right, I know how hard it is, so I'm just going to take it. I'm going to wear you out. I'm, a, I'm going to take this punch so that you get so tired. So when I get my stance, I'm going to come in hard. And I found even in my life, there were times where I was so busy dancing around the ring. You know, I didn't want to feel the punches. I didn't want to feel the hurt. I just wanted to just kind of do my thing and not really see what, what wall was going on. But what I didn't realize was that there is power in understanding adversity. Adversity is like that best friend that you don't want, but you need. You know, she's, she's the one that, that just shows up at your front door, bags packed, and she doesn't tell you that she's, she's coming and she doesn't knock on the door. She tears it down. Like she kicks the door open and she moves in and she doesn't move into the guest room, right? She moves into your bedroom, your space. And she just props up and she's like, listen, girl, we're going to be here for a while. But I have three questions to ask you while we're here. And I kid you not, these three questions changed my life. The first question was, who are you? What, what, what defines you? And then the second question was, what's your intention for where you are and what's going on? What, 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 what's your why? Why are you where you are? Why are you doing what you're doing? What's, what's driving you? And then the third question was, locate yourself, spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally. I cannot tell you the time in which this came to me. When I first started in life, you know, I was a kid, I was four years old. My mom asked me, what do you wanna be? What do you wanna do when you grow up? And I just looked at this TV, uh, the, the TV screen and I said, I wanna be on that. I wanna be a black Shirley Temple. <laughs> I'm dating myself. But my mom was like, well, listen, I don't know how to get you on TV, but there's this theater down the street and I heard some famous people come sometimes, maybe an agent will see you, I don't know, but if you got a gift, you got a talent, you gotta go for it. Let's just see what happens. If you can do it in front of a live place, then maybe you really got something. And so I was four years old, I went up there and I, I went on stage and I said, I'm the good ship lollipop. And then I sang another song and they were like, oh my gosh, she's great. I ended up being at that place for 12 years. I ended up getting my equity card while I was there. There were agents that saw me uh, in the, audience and signed me. I would come out to LA and I was doing pilots and TV shows and commercials. I mean, in that moment, I didn't realize that my mom was teaching me to just step out, use all your gifts, no matter what it is, don't be fearful. There's so many different ways you can use your gifts, but just use them to the best of your ability. And the one thing she also taught me was in terms of my purpose is that all I need to do is to glorify God with all he's given me and to serve others, bless others with those gifts. And that is true success. Because no matter what happens, your highs and lows, when you're clear about what you're doing and why you're doing it, and it's for something other than yourself, you always win. 
And so as I got older and I'm in college, I graduate college, I, I decided to go to law school. I know it was not my thing, but made another pivot and was like, you know what? I really want to get back into acting. I, let me just get back out there. And as I was out there, I realized that there were parts that weren't being made for me. They weren't being created for me, written for me. And I said, you know what? Let me understand what it's like to be on the business end of things. Let me understand how to really affect change to serve other people who may be in the same situation or are in the same situation as, as I am. I wanna be able to, to, to be a decision maker, to, to create opportunities for other people who are, are under, underserved. And so that was my act of service. That's what started me on this path. And so I was excited, I, was, I, was, I had a zeal for it because it wasn't about me. It was about the bigger picture. And as I got into the industry and my career and my star started rising and everything was just champagne wishes and caviar dreams. I mean, I'm, I'm developing shows. I'm creating shows that are getting critically acclaimed and getting great ratings. And I'm winning awards and my names in magazines. And I mean, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm in the house in the, in, the, in the gate, behind the gate, you know what I mean? I got the cars and my kids are in, you know, God awful, crazy private schools, not God awful, but just in terms of the pricing was God awful. It was so high and ridiculous, but that's just what it was, right? And just living it up. And along the way, I, I lost my why. My why became, oh my God, I gotta keep this up. Uh, oh my gosh, you know, I'm India Kenny Stearns of, or, oh my goodness, like, okay, um, I, I got a hit here, I got to get another hit here, I got I to gotta prove this, I got to validate this. My validation became uh, dependent upon other people's, you know, thought of me, uh, whether or not they held me at this high regard, or if I didn't get a pat on the back, or a, or a nod, or a oh my God, you did that. You know what I mean? I felt like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta stay in this thing. And then the crash happens, the stock market crash. And I was so, so in myself, but I didn't realize it. I was so dependent upon external things to make me feel like I was worthy that it wasn't until those things started to be pulled away that I realized, wow, girl, you, you did do a pivot, but in the wrong direction. And I'll never forget the day I was called into the president's office, into her conference room. And she was like, okay, we gotta make a change. We're gonna do some restructuring. And I'm like, ooh, okay. So, all right, so I'm gonna have to look at my department and see who all needs to, you know, who can I let go? Who's gonna be the one to, Gosh, that's going to be hard. <laughs> Little did I know. She was like, yeah, well, we actually thought it through already. And we're thinking about restructuring at the senior level. And I'm like, ooh, that's me. <laughs> I was like, oops. But I was a little arrogant and prideful in the sense that how you going to let go of me? I'm your, you know, I'm your golden goose. Like, you know, you know who I am. You know what I mean? But there was a little bit of me that had a little bit of extra like false humility. I was like, you know what? It's going to be fine. God's going to work it out. Meanwhile, I had three other networks who wanted me. They were already reaching out to try to poach me anyway. So even though the stock market had gone down, things were moving around, it hadn't really hit us. It was starting to hit, which is why this particular company that I was with was trying to downsize and restructure. And so I was like, it's fine. You know, someone else sees my worth and they know how great I am. It's fine. So I don't stop spending. I got this large little chunk of cash from them for my severance and for being laid off. And I was like, hey, you know, my husband's doing really well. We're good, you know. <sighs> Three months go by. I get a call. Listen, um, the economics here, like it's really bad. Like the president got let go. There's a hiring freeze. The position we're about to send an offer out on, we just, we can't do that anymore. I'm sorry. I'm like, no problem. I got two more. Second one comes in. We are so very sorry, but we actually have to cut that department in half. And we don't even know how much longer we're going to be able to sustain that. There's no way we can hire you right now. And this is me. 
Ooh, good. I don't have to worry about trying to pick which one I'm going to go with. It's this third one. Meanwhile, I'm six months in. Uh, money is completely, I mean, literally, my little nest egg is about to be depleted. Um, my husband's job is, has been severely affected as well. I mean, it was dire. And I'm like, okay, this is it. This is it. And I get the call. And the call that I get, I thought was going to be, all right, papers in the, paperwork's in the mail. You know, we're going to send it over right now. Everything is good. No, it was not. It was, India, we are so sorry. We tried everything. We tried everything, but there's nothing we can do. We just, we just don't, we, we have to put a hiring freeze. It's just too bad right now. Devastation is the word. And I moved into this place of resentment, right? Like, I'm a good one. You know what I mean? Like I was the nice one. You know, I'm looking at other people who are prospering, who are growing. Things are going well for them. And they are tyrants. They are liars. They are not uh, nice. They are, I just, I, I, I was so upset. And of course, I know you probably can relate, right? I'm, I'm the only one, you know, where you're in that place and you're like, life is out of control. I'm, I'm up for promotion or I was expecting something to happen and it just didn't happen the way that I thought it was. Life is coming at me fast and I, I don't know what to do about it. What do I do? Where do I go? Like, I don't understand what's happening. And so I'm having to talk with God and I'm like, okay, listen, I see you got adversity up in my situation, but here's the deal. I'm going to need you to move her out of the way because I have been a good soldier in this game, okay? I've looked out for the underdog. I've done my part. I need you to work this out. So you need to go ahead and get somebody to call me to get me this job so I can get my life back. So work that out. And I'm in the corner waiting. Like, yeah, you figure that out. Cause, and it, nothing moved. Nothing, nothing moved. I'm starting to panic now. Um, and in that moment is where the three questions came. India, who are you? Well, I, I don't know because I don't have my title. Um, my money is gone. I might lose my house. Like, what do you mean? Who am I? I don't know now because it's gone. That's a problem. In the moment, I didn't know that, but it was a problem. Second question, What's driving you? Like, what? why are you here? It was no longer, oh, I want to affect change. I want to be here to help other people, to serve people. No, it was, no, what's driving me is to do whatever I need to do to get my stuff back. Because this is, this is crazy. This is some bull. Okay. Third question, locate yourself. Where are you mentally, spiritually, emotionally? Mentally, I'm out of my mind. I'm depressed. I'm upset. I don't understand what's going on. Uh, spiritually, I don't feel anything. Like I feel disconnected from everything because my whole identity has been ripped away. So what do you want from me? Adversity is like, okay, well, you're right. Like this is where you're at. Now let's talk about where you want to go. Until then, I'm going to stay posted in your bedroom. So once I moved from that place, I was like, okay, that's not working. And so I do what my kids do, right? Whenever they're on punishment, <laughs> they'll be like, okay, okay, mom. All right, listen, uh, we get it. We get it. We see what you were saying. And we probably could have done better with things. And we were, we were disobedient here. And listen, you don't have to worry about that anymore. So we're good. Can I just have my stuff back? That was me. This is me talking to adversity, <laughs> talking to God saying, listen, um, I get it. Uh, there were some places where I kind of got arrogant and I, I lost, I lost my center. You know, I, it wasn't really about using my gifts to help other people. It was more about, you know, keeping the money up and I get it. I see it now. And, oh man, that's rough. You know what? I'm not going to do that again. I see it, Lord. I see it. So, uh, can I, can I have my stuff back for real now? Like, this is great. Like, can I? Crickets. And this is where I want to really encourage you all. Anytime you see yourself in a space where adversity is coming in like a flood, it could be a, a diagnosis. 
It could be a divorce. It could be a loss of a loved one. It could be loss of a job. It could be loss of a promotion. It could be anything that either, whether you had a hand in it or it was just coming from the outside in, one thing always remains. The trajectory of where you go from wherever you are in that moment of receiving the adversity and feeling it is directly dependent upon how you respond, how you respond to it. Because whether you wanna dig your heels in and be mad and be depressed and be upset and sing your shoulda, coulda, woulda, it doesn't move adversity and doesn't move you. And so I realized in that moment that my attitude, my mindset, something was off because nothing was moving. I had no peace, I had no clarity, I had, no, I had nothing, I had nothing. And so I was so broken, I'm looking at my situation, I'm like, I'm about to lose my house, I'm about to, I gotta get rid of a car, I gotta pull my kids out of school, my, my husband is feeling, you know, just really frustrated as well, being, you know, our leader, our provider, like we were all in this space of like, God, what are we doing? Where are you showing us what we need to do? And honestly, it was the three questions. India, who are you? And once I realized that I had redefined myself based on material things and other crazy people, like we're crazy, you're crazy, I'm, we all got stuff, we all got insecurities, we all got, and we bring them to the situations if we haven't really processed certain things and we allow what other people say to make us feel a certain way or dictate how we act and how we respond, it's ridiculous. Why do I have to, manage myself based on someone else's crazy expectation of who they think I am. If I am putting my best foot forward, if I'm working in excellence, yes, I could take constructive criticism, but whether you like me, whether you uphold me or have, have the standard, what really should drive me, what really should define me is the fact that I know my gifts and talents. I know who, who, who God created. He created me fearfully and wonderfully made with, with gifts and talents and purpose for me to go out and affect change and inspire other people. That's who I am. And whether I drive a Bentley or a Toyota, it should not matter. Whether I live in a certain zip code or not, it should not matter. That does not define me. It doesn't. Whether I have an SVP title or an EVB title or a VP title, that does not define me. Who's in my Rolodex does not define me. And then I got into the, what's driving you? What's driving you, India? What's driving me is to hear, well done. You did everything you did. You poured out everything that God put inside of you to really affect people, to encourage people, to inspire people, to work out a service, whatever it is that you've got everywhere you go, that is what's driving you. There is peace in that. So no matter what I'm doing, no matter what the ebbs and flows are in my life, in my career, if my intention is, I just wanna serve. I wanna be a part of something bigger than myself. I wanna be able to give back in whatever I'm doing. I'm gonna keep going because I can see a real outcome in that. But if it's just me, that's a never ending well that will never be full, ever. It's never gonna be enough. It's never sustainable. And then the final question, where are you locate yourself mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually? Well, now in this moment, in that particular moment where I got my clarity, I realized that, you know what? Being in this corner, feeling depressed doesn't work. I am now in a place where I am active. I understand my why, I understand who I am. I am not defined by things and stuff. I now know my purpose. I am in my purpose and I'm working that out. And spiritually I'm connected because I'm connected to my creator. I'm connected to my why. I have a drive and a zeal for something bigger than myself. So mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, I am active, I am in it and I am present. And you will be so surprised in this because right after that, after I packed up my beautiful kitchen and I downsized to a townhome and I, I'm in one car and me and the kids like, and my husband, like we're in a smaller place, but we were in the happiest place of our lives. And I got back to my why. I got back to what meant the most to me, which was really serving other people with my gifts. 
started my own company. And in that pivot, let me tell you what happened. When I got really clear, I heard that Open Roofing Network was in trouble. They were having issues. And in my consulting business, because that's the business that I started, I reached out to a friend saying, hey, how can I be of service? And I kid you not, it wasn't about meeting her. It wasn't about, ooh, let me show her what I can do, which, oh, India, that would have been her. It was, I want to be a part of something bigger than myself. She is affecting change with programming and content in a way that I've never really been able to do at all the other places. I want to do this. I want to be a part of it. And they were like, well, listen, you got to wrap out all your other projects. We want you full time. And that was a decision that I had to make. And it was the best decision of my life because in that I grew and it just, it was amazing to the point to where there was an opportunity, and I call it my wildest dream, where I was in a boardroom with Miss Winfrey and we were talking about a show and she's asking me, well, what do you think? What are your thoughts, Andy? I wanna know what you think about this. Now, <laughs> that's not why I got to the company. That's not what I was driving for. But what I'm telling you is this, when you're clear about your why, when you're clear about your intentions, when you are so driven by something bigger than yourself, wildest dreams happen. They just do. And to be across the table from someone so prolific, so profound, so amazing, asking me for my opinion in that moment was a surreal wildest dream moment. And it is in that moment that I realized I will never go back to who I was or where that was and every day in every situation, no matter what comes my way, whether it's a pivot in my career, whether it's a pivot in my relationships, whatever it is, I ask those three questions. Who are you? What defines you? And what's driving you? What's your intention? And locate yourself, India. Whenever I get that little tinge of, oh, I'm in this for something else, I get that little thing of like, ooh, pull it back, girl. So I wanna encourage you today, no matter what that pivot is, no matter what you're doing in life, put those three questions in the front of you and know that if you answer those questions truthfully and honestly, you will always stay on the right path. You will always be clear about your why and your purpose and you will have peace and you will have clarity and you will have direction. So. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to just give you a little bit of taste of my life and my career and my career mapping and my pivoting and my journey and a little nugget for you. At the end of like six years of being at Open Roofing Network, I decided to make another pivot and start my own company again because I felt that I had ran my race. I had done everything that I needed to do there. People thought I was crazy. People thought they were like, are you nuts? But when you are so clear about your why and you're in tune with where God is leading you and what he's doing, uh, you step out on faith and things open up. And I am so glad to say that I am now CEO and president of my own consulting firm again, but at a much higher level. And I am engaging with various production companies, studios, producers to develop content. And I'm doing it from the perspective of me. And being in a place where I'm able to do various things, various genres, various spaces, various uh, creative opportunities to really maximize all of my gifts. And I'm just so grateful that I was able to see that and step on on faith. But had I not gone through what I'd gone through, I don't think I would have had the courage or faith to do it. And so, again, adversity is your friend. You got to learn how to take the punches, how to see where it's coming from. Plant your feet and ask and answer those three questions fearlessly and honestly and move. Learn how to grow through, not just go through. Thank you.